This presentation shows how the vibroacoustic method is used as a fast diagnosis tool to easily detect mechanical problems in the tap changers online or offline before they create an outage. And uh, I have a second presentation. And uh, this, the second one will present a real, co a real case showing how New Brunswick Power has used this tool to adjust properly in OLTC. So 40 to 50% of failures on transformers come from tap changers and are of mechanical origin. And four studies done by Hydro-Quebec, ESCOM, CAA, uh, and Australia during 10 years on three continents show exactly the same results. So here, what are the existing methods for OLTC testing? Here you have, in fact, we have five methods. The, you have the vibroacoustic method, the motor current method, the DRM, dynamic uh, resistance, the DGA, dissolved gas analysis, the thermography, and the, these tables come from C. Gray, and uh, they uh, compare which one is the best for uh, what kind of problems. And we can spend a lot of time on this table. Well, you, you will have it uh, after if you're uh, interested. And, but what I would like to say is the vibroacoustic method offers the widest detection spectrum. So here we have our instruments are able to do the three methods on the five. So what kind of benefits OLTC vibroacoustic testing bring to electric utilities? It's applicable to any kind of tap changers, online or offline. It's uh, exactly similar to a cytoscope and it's exactly what we are trying to do is just to try to listen. And this way we, uh, uh, we can, we try to, uh, to detect all problems just in uh, listening. And in fact, with vibration and current uh, combined, we are able to detect a lot of uh, range of potential problems. And the, the fact is when you try to listen something, it forces you to better uh, understand how the tap changer uh, is working. And thanks to this understanding, after we can detect problems at earlier stage. And it's uh, really uh, excellent in terms of timing and mechanical uh, adjustment. And the second presentation will show you how. It's uh, also an easy tool to detect arcing contact problems. Of course, it's online only. And uh, we have a power, sof uh, power software analysis, thanks to Hydro-Quebec envelopes. I will show you how. And uh, uh, the, with a high sampling time, uh, because of the vibration, we use at 100 uh, kilohertz, which is around uh, 10 microseconds. And we have also an unlimited recording time unit, unique in the market. So this way, the problem with tap changer is that you are able to, you, you are uh, obliged to record the vibroacoustic signal, which is uh, a signal very rich in, uh, in frequencies, in, uh, in details and during a long time. So this is like, a, uh, it's a challenge to be able to, to do this. And also it's an excellent tool to help the user to decide which OLTCs are due for a maintenance operation because the vibroacoustic uh, recording, it's exactly like a stethoscope. So you just listen. So it's a, it's a quick, uh, quick installation for the, for the, for the accelerometer and for the motor current uh, uh, transducer. And it takes maybe 15 minutes to install. And, uh, and after it's a quick, uh, with a quick uh, recording. So in testing OLTC before and after maintenance, this tool can be used for quality control. And also in testing year after year, trending analysis becomes easy and allows a reduction of maintenance interventions. And our goal is, of course, the reduction of the transformer failures. So this uh, uh, typical uh, resistive OLTC type diverter switch operation sequence. Here, I just focus on only one thing. It's uh, the transition of a diverter switch 
is done in only 50 milliseconds to avoid overheating the resistance. So we are able to listen all the impacts of the mechanism during a step up or step down operation. And uh, the motor operates between two and 12 seconds. So this is like our uh, first uh, even which is important to know to be able to analyze uh, uh, the how the OLTC is working. And uh, the motor drive mechanism here, you have a typically an old, uh, uh, I like this picture because it's old and uh, nothing, uh, uh, everything is, uh, is uh, like uh, transparent. So you can see like the motor, but the, on the new uh, cabinet, it's really, uh, everything is hidden. So it's hard to, uh, to, uh, to understand what you have behind. So in fact, this motor allows the tap changer to move from a position to another. And in the recording, analyzing the EC or DC current of this motor during the step up or step down uh, operation, we're able to know if the mechanism are forcing or not. And the motor current allows us also to start and stop the recording. So with this, thanks to the motor current, we are able to just to have a window the, uh, of a recording. So this way we just focus on this event. So what is the vibroacoustic diagnostic principle? Uh, each operation of any onload tap changer produces a specific vibroacoustic wave pattern. We call this a signature or a fingerprint. And with a vibroacoustic sensor, which is an accelerometer, we can record this signal the same way a stethoscope picks up a person's heartbeat. And it's simple. A stable OLTC always shows consistent signatures and any degradation of the OLTC induces changes in the signature. So with these two simple facts, we are able to, uh, to work and detect a lot of problems. So here you, you can see a, a slide where the, what is a Hydro-Quebec envelopes? This uh, has been patented in 2001. So more than 20 years. And here on the left, you, you can see the envelope versus raw data. So here it's a typical uh, vibroacoustic signals given by an accelerometer. And on with the red color, you have the envelope. So in fact, the envelope takes, well, it's exactly, I think the name is correct. It's the envelope. So it's what our uh, naturally, our eye uh, can see and draw. So, and uh, from this on the left, you we got we calculate what we call the Hydro-Quebec envelopes, and here you have the current envelope, which is uh, on the bottom, and here you have the high, high frequency envelope and the low frequency envelope for the for the uh, for the accelerometer. And why envelope? Because it simplifies the signal get the shape of the signal and you focus on valuable impacts only. And on top of this, it's easy to analyze and easy to compare. So in fact, the you know exactly how you, your uh, tap changer is working when you are able to uh, understand, to divide all the uh, your coding in startup, changeover switch, diverter switch, contactor impact, selector switch, it's uh, silent, it's not noisy. And uh, here you have a diverter switch impact. Here you have uh, the breaking part. And hereafter, it's the post operation. So when you're able to, to uh, understand these signals, the, you have a great uh, understanding of the, the how the tap changer is working. And uh, Typically, this is exactly what we do. We, we first, we, we record the motor current and the vibroacoustic. And then after, with only these two signals, we can do uh, on-site quick analysis, thanks to the envelope and thanks to the, to the Open Zen Tap software, which is able to calculate this in a in few seconds. And so here we can do a diagnosis in 15 minutes for an online test and one hour for an offline test. 
On the offsite deep analysis, what we have, we have uh, Excel report. Well, of course, it's a copyright. And we have the, thanks to the envelope, the contact where the envelopes gives you a lot of information. And we have what we call a diagnosis card. And we can, we are able to compare with the Zansal database of OLTC reference uh, signatures. So it's exactly our uh, method. Here you have an example of where of contact. So on the left, it's uh, like a severe wear of contacts before the intervention. So when you compare the high frequency and the low uh, frequency envelope, you can see that more than 60% of difference between the high and low frequency envelopes. And here, exactly the same test uh, uh, after a repair, after the intervention, less than 20% of difference between the high and low frequency uh, uh, envelopes. So here it's a good indication of the wear of context. Here it's a really a very easy uh, to detect. You, you you can see the example of poor lubrication, and here you have a high torque, and you can see that the that the current is forcing uh, during this uh, this step. You see, and it's it's not usual. It has to be flat. An example of uh, asynchronism that you can see here, you have a one and 20 millisecond delay, delay after the end of the current envelope. This is before repair and after a repair here, you have, they have done just uh, an, uh, an adjustment uh, of the tap changer from one position to uh, the other one. <clears throat> Here it's an example of arcing contact. Here it's online. Here you have a 20, uh, 35G on the left. And here uh, on the uh, offline, it's, uh, the impact is only 7G. And when you compare the black signal with the red signal, which is the red is offline and the black is online. So you can see here that exactly at this time, you have an arcing, so you can uh, you can after uh, when you understand how your uh, contact is working, you can see what kind of uh, hole you are going to find with the arcing. Because the uh, arcing, what it does is just uh, creates holes in the contact, and then after the contact is damaged. Here, it's. Uh, this is an important work to do it's with the because you have your tap changer here you must get what we call the timing how uh, how it works uh, and the, how the the switching uh, se sequences is done and then after we need to uh, associate these timing with the vibroacoustic signal and this this uh this step, it's it's an important step because it's um, it's hard. Sometimes it's hard, and so it's a part of the difficulty. But we we have uh, associated after uh, you will see in the presentation the the DRM dynamic resistance just to do a correlation, and then after so we have we know exactly at which impact at what time it uh, it uh, correlates here. An example of abnormal inrush current, here it's a real case also. It's a comparison of the inrush current between two transformers same time. And here you, you, you can see that it's forcing. And here this, the inrush was not, like the, this in rush is normal and this one is not and this one was just a bad uh, adjustment of uh, a contactor in the control cabinet so in playing with the timing so they were able to solve the problem because uh, the breaker was opening because of uh, uh, this delay in the motor current for the tap changer 
here it's a the number number it's a current four single so it's easy and after we have uh, you, you have to do like a break uh, analysis <clears throat> so with this all this part of uh, when you analyze all your recording your vibe acoustic and your motor current so so at this time you have done like a complete uh, analysis so as we have seen the challenge is how to facilitate the comprehension of vibroacoustic signal because several me mechanisms are operating at the same time so one way to address this challenge is to analyze simultaneously three recording the vibration the dynamic uh, resistance and the motor current of the tap changer in action. So what equipment you need, you need the tap four plus that you, that you can see here in the bottom, the tap DRM you see here on the top. This is so like a typical uh, connections that you do like a DRM. And I'm not going to explain the, the how the DRM. This is on the right here. You have a typical signal where you see a typical uh, transition from one position to uh, the other one. So here you you can see um, like a, a, an EBB, UZ, ERN, uh, how it works, and here you can see it. So, in fact, this is like the, an association the, during the, the transition. And here you have the simultaneous testing. So here you have the DRM that you see on the top, the vibration. So you, you can see in, exactly that this transition has produce this impact. And on the bottom, you have the motor current. And, and here we have like a, with a, a video, uh, we have done this with the uh, Hydro-Quebec in a training center. So here you, you, you can see the, the association, like for the first impact, the second, and the and the third. So how so it's easy after to uh, understand the impact thanks to the DRM. And here we have some examples of recording for different OLTCs done with TAP4 Plus and the access and its uh, accessory, the TAP DRM. Here you have a uh, from MR, an example of MR, an example with the uh, EBB. So here we have, so we have produced like an example of action plan to elaborate a predictive maintenance for transformers with OLTC. So the step one is to uh, establish your transformer list with the OLTC to monitor. The step two, for each transformer, do a complete test to get a reference all taps offline and tap four plus tap DRM. And we have developed uh, what we call the Zansol checklist. And at step three, you produce a complete report analysis for each OLTC transformer. So we have developed also a Zansol template report analysis. So I can guarantee that at the end of this report, you know exactly how, how your uh, tap changer works. And step four, and according to diagnostic results, you, you can establish now your maintenance plan for each uh, transformer. So you know if it works correctly or not. And then after, you can do periodic vibroacoustic test online or offline just to, uh, uh, to so this way you can act uh, very uh, easily. So here, as I, as I told you, this is the second uh, presentation. Uh, so 
it's uh, this presentation is how we can use so it's not easy for me because i the the engineer that has uh, done this presentation his name is uh, christian noel he's a professional uh, engineer in uh, new brunswick power and uh, he has presented this uh, this powerpoint at uh, during the event sync uh, 2023 in uh, Fredericton. So here, the you can see the uh, in Caracat T1. It's uh, north of uh, New uh, New Brunswick. The during the LTC uh, maintenance on an MR type M3D500, and they have done a vibro acoustic and DRM performed performed before and after maintenance. So in general, there are two types of LTC, the compartment or box type and in-tank design. In our case, this LTC is an in-tank design. Even if most of our in-tank design LTCs are three separate phase models, we do have a few delta configuration that you see on the right. And the delta configuration has a cylinder with two diverters and the other is a regular cylinder with a single diverter. So in fact, here I have uh, some notes that on the uh, colon one, you can see the diverter one on the top, which is W, the diverter two uh, here on the, uh, not the bottom. And here on the bottom, which is uh, written U, is a selector. Uh, associated to the U uh, diverter, so it's uh, so this one is associated to this one, and for the uh, the column two, you have the single diverter V, which with the which uh, whose selector is V here on the bottom, and the selector W is associated to the diverter one on the top. So. The, uh, I hope you will not ask me questions on this configuration because really I'm not familiar with this and uh, Christian is really like the right guy to ask. So if you have some questions here, I can, I, I could uh, after uh, transfer uh, your questions to, to Christian. So here the, on this slide, you, you can see the timing between the motor drives and diverter assemblies is adjusted using the shaft connections between them. So this part is really important because uh, it's thanks to this shaft, they, they can adjust the timing and, and you, you will understand how uh, with the next slides. So here, in fact, uh, in this case, we installed two vibroacoustic sensors, two on separate walls near the diverters and located about 18 inches from the cover. But as you can see, and we recommend is to get only one sensor instead of two here, but when you are in exploration mode, so you don't, you, you come for the first time on a, on a tap changer or on a, on a transformer, you don't know exactly where to install your accelerometers. And it's common that to put one, two, three to get the best uh, the best uh, recording impact so here uh, the, on this graph you you are seeing the sound made by each operations being captured by both vibroacoustic sensors and also the motor current recorded by the ec clamp and and uh, as i told you, you you can easily remove one of these uh, signal line and, and keep only one. So when adding the DRM, so uh, as I told you, if you if you have only the vibra acoustic and the current, so it's not easy to, to see, okay, what is this impact? What is it, uh, this impact? But when you, when you uh, correlate the DRM, the uh, so we can then confirm when exactly the diverters are switching 
the current. It helps understand the information provided by the vibroacoustic sensors. So here it's the tap up operation before maintenance. So the results shown are from before maintenance. And we are seeing all three phases side by side. From this information, we can tell that A phase is not operating in synchronization with B and C phases, as you can see. You see the, this one, you see this impact here, but here it's, it's done in the second impact. And uh, so A phase is likely the single diverter where B, B and C phases are associated with the double, double diverter cylinder. Our test plan calls for testing all the tap transition going up and also back down. In this up operation, we are seeing that A phase is operating earlier than B and C. So that, that you can see here. And, but in the down operation, we are not on, only seeing that A phase is operating slightly later than the other two phases. In fact, A phase is operation after the motor current is in, interrupted that you can see here. You see, in fact, this impact is the most important in this case. And we can see clearly that that uh, the motor current is uh, is interrupted so this so the timing of this diverter is at the limit where it could possibly not operate during a down operation this would result in a phase being on a different tap than the other two phases so this could be uh, dangerous here you have this graph is now showing the acoustic signatures and DRM information recorded after our maintenance. And we are seeing A phase operating now around the same time as B and C phase originally. So here it's the uh, after uh, adjustment. But the big improvement can be seen on this down operation where A phase is operating well within the runtime of the motor now. So this aligns with what is seen for B and C phase that you can see, if you see like the, the previous. So you, uh, I can show you quickly, you see here. And now it's uh, the tap down. So now uh, everything is adjusted uh, properly. And just to review the before maintenance readings, showing the difference in timing between A phase and the other two phases that, that you can see here. This one is on the for the A phase, adjusted on the, not adjusted, but the problem here are uh, syn uh, synchronized that you can see here, but not here. And uh, the, the after maintenance results now indicate the timing between all three phases is now better adjusted. The selectors and diverters operations are now, are now more in, synch in synchronization. So I'm not showing the down operation, but the timing was the same as the up operation shown on this slide. So the Christian has written that Zensol TAP4 can give a good indication of the timing between di diverters. When time allows, it can be used before and after maintenance to validate the LTC is operating properly after our intervention. As we are getting more, more experience within, with the information provided by the TAP4, we could use offline acoustic measurements to focus prioritized maintenance on specific units. So I think uh, Randy, I have finished. So if you have questions, so here you, you, you can see with the, like the top four and the top uh, DRM used in, uh, uh, in a Caracat in New Brunswick. Do they sell this tap changer manu to manufacturers or just to utilities who must install them? In fact, we are more, 
we will be more than happy to we 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 are selling to uh, manufacturers and uh, electric uh, utilities in fact as soon as you 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 need to do like a quality control on a on a tap changer so you, you need now you have no tools well now of of, of course we have the tap 4 plus uh, and the tap drm so and uh, our hope is that that the manufacturer that the electric u uh, utility will will ask for a vibra acoustic uh, uh, signature and then after they can uh, they can use it as a reference when when the when the transformer with the with tap changer are are installed in the uh, in the substations so this way they they can compare exactly like they do for breakers, for maintenance, for timing. Uh, so you have some uh, uh, reference uh, recordings that that you can use after on substation to see, to 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 check if everything is working uh, correctly. Okay, here's a comment from Jeffrey and a question: Outside tap changer PDM in general regarding medium and high voltage utility transformer manufacturing and procurement can you speak to the quality you have observed on new transformers since the doe and ieee standards and efficiency changes in 2010 can you repeat the questions <laughs> okay because have seems... you have you noticed uh, can you have you can you can you address the issue of quality transformer quality that you have noticed in the field on new transformers since the Department of Energy and IEEE standards and efficiency changes in 2010? Has there been uh, a change in the quality of transformers uh, in the in the uh, in the field? Is that right, Jeffrey? Is that the am I posing that question correctly? Uh, well, yes. first, I I must, uh, uh, when you are talking about the Sunder on 2010, I'm not aware of this because me, I'm like more in the side of the uh, instruments. But what I can say clearly is that we, with, with thanks to Viber Acoustic, thanks to, to the motor current, thanks to the DRM or, and all these the signals all together, we you we are able to detect very quickly problems that the things are not working properly. So it's like a tool. It's a lot of things that in the past, before 2010, where we 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 were not able to to see and to record because a few a few tools. Uh, uh, were existing at this time. The the top four, the top four, like the first, was created in 2008, and then we we start like to to sell this unit through around the 50 countries uh, uh, from 2009 and 2010. So we have a lot of we we, uh, we have developed like a series of uh, uh, testing. Uh, uh, instrument uh, specifically which focus only on the top on the on the tap changer you see so we we have tools now in the in the in the past we were like like blind yeah. because we 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 have uh, no tool then they think that it works properly but now we have a real tool and serious tool to uh uh, to see what is happening. It's like the heart, you see. Uh, in the past, before the electrocardiogram, uh, you, 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 will, you don't know uh, anything about your heart. But now we have a, a serious tool and we, we have uh, like a lot, a lot of uh, good, good information that, of course, the manufacturers didn't like. But it's the fact. But okay. This could exactly like your uh, previous uh, presentation. Uh, if they are, uh, uh, the manufacturer has to be uh, open mind and then bring, uh, bring a lot of uh, uh, in its design. You see, to 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 be able to in, improve their their design. Right. 
Okay. Uh, three short questions. What is the frequency BW of vibroacoustic sensors? In the, uh, uh, BW, it's... Yeah, Mahendra, Mahendra asked, what is the frequency BW? And I don't know what BW means. I thought you might know. But what uh, is... Bandwidth, the, bandwidth. 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 Oh, Mahendra's bandwidth. 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 It's uh, around uh, 15 uh, kilohertz. Okay, are there are they this are they the same as acoustic emission sensors? Uh, no, it's a it's it's a vibroacoustic. No, it's it's a different sensor. It's okay. a piezo uh, electric. If you uh, we, we we use the IEC um, uh, uh, piezoelectric uh, uh, accelerometer. Uh, okay, actually, the accelerometer operates uh, below uh, 100 kilohertz, and uh, uh, most of the piezoelectric acoustic emission sensors they are designed to operate 100 kilohertz to up to few few megahertz. Yeah, but 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 we, we uh, the acoustic sensor is more. Uh, it's what I see. It's what I understand. Is more uh, dedicated to the. To the partial uh, discharge. Is this yes, correct? correct? Right. Yes. yes. Yeah. Here, so here's a, we, here's we a third. Not, we Sorry. are not in this. We are. Uh, 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 we we focus on the vibroacoustic, uh, the, the the on the on the uh, accelerometer uh, dedicated. So like uh, for our some some sampling time is uh, five microseconds and ten. Uh, microsecond, so it's 100 uh, kilohertz. Uh, Fouad, can you give the name of the sensor that you use? Yeah, we, we use from a PCB, uh, which is a, who, who is a manufacturer in uh, uh, an American, uh, it's uh, an American one, and uh, uh, BNK, it's uh, um, from uh, uh, Denmark. Right. I, I put I put uh, I put Fouad's uh, email address into the chat, uh, Mahendra and, and others. If you want very detailed questions for Fouad, maybe it's better to uh, communicate with him directly about uh, all of that uh, later. Uh, the next question is: uh, What the waveforms captured using oscilloscope or laptop? It's a laptop. It's so a. Yeah, it's uh, like like me or personally. Well, look look at this picture. You see, you yeah. see what you see here. It's a right. uh, notebook. You see. So you, you, uh, like uh, for me, I use like a Surface Pro from uh, uh, Microsoft to to do my my, my test. So you, you you can use any my Microsoft uh, PC based Windows. But of okay. course, it has to be like fast because the, the it's a USB uh, connection, and uh, so it has to be like a fast, uh, uh, fast computer. Right. I was curious to know if the vibroacoustic analysis is also used in other applications beside transformer applications. For example, sensing issues with engine operation, etc. Well. <laughs> The, the the accelerometer is used uh, since um, maybe more than 50 years and uh, and the impact are uh, uh, are recorded through uh, through uh, through accelerometers they are used like in um, how do you say machine turnout sorry Randy. it's like a, a, a like a turbine uh, yeah so so and uh, we we use we use like uh, the the vibroacoustic the axometer is also for breakers to to for the impacts I have like uh, done uh, in this uh, with the electricity forum uh, presentation mm -hmm. on the vibroacoustic uh, applied for uh, high voltage breakers and the, uh, the advantage of the vibroacoustic of the the axometer is it's it acts exactly like a stethoscope and then you get a signal and the people usually they don't like the signal because it's like uh, it's complex signal and it's why like uh, hydro quebec has developed what they call the what we call now the envelopes 
which uh, I have shown that it's uh, simplified the, the recording. But it's really our, our goal is to use the, the accelerometer exactly like a, like a stethoscope. Great. Excellent yeah. answer. Okay. And, and is there an application for this in, in motor vibration? Yes, we have. I have done some tests, I think maybe five years before. I was like in Beige, in James Bay with the uh, Hydro Quebec, but it was like uh, the because uh, associated to the high voltage breakers, you have uh, motors mm -hmm. like to, to to push the pressure of the for uh, air blast breakers, and this we have used it to uh, to uh, detect problems and to detect uh, abnormal uh, impacts, and we have found. Some so the idea is simple is is just use like a reference one who works correctly and put it and do the same recording with one which does not work and then after you you can compare it thanks to this you are able to uh, to to detect where the problem comes from. Okay, great. Thank you very much.